Hi, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Zoom Garden Plot. Um, today is episode 13 of season two, and we have a jam-packed episode for you tonight. On the agenda are garden updates from Jim. He's not here yet, so if um, his turn comes and we don't have him amongst us, we'll just skip over to the Greenwood Lake Community Garden. We can always I yelled at him. Back to Jim. <laughs> I said, you better be here. Thank you, Chad. Um, we have a lot of pictures from uh, Jim, from Greenwood Lake Community Garden, from the community too. Um, there's, as usual, an opportunity for question and answers or just some general discussion, a chance to show what you're harvesting. And then we'll end up, as always, uh, closing with announcements. So um, I don't have access to the participants. If anybody can just take a peek around, tell me if Jim is here. I just texted him. So hopefully, I mean, his, his daughter just had a baby. And I, I, just, I talked to him Saturday. I said, you definitely, If I said, I'll, I'll show you pictures, but you have to be there. So I don't know. OK, so I'm just going to skip through these. Yeah, I guess I'll start. And then we're going to do the Greenwood Lake Community Garden update. Go ahead, Chad. Uh, we'll put more pictures. Well, speaking of Jim, there's Jim. <laughs> yeah. Jim yes, Hall, Jim. right there. And he was great. Uh, you know, things are growing fantastically. I should, probably should have taken more pictures. Added, you know, I know Jim sent like 50 pictures, so I didn't want to send that many. Um, but we built our compost bin, uh, which, which is really great, uh, the, uh, the pallets and Jim did it in like 10, 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah, wow. He's, he's really uh, quite efficient. He just like, takes that weird angle and just uh, screws them together. And then we had a beautiful compost bin and everything, you know, we're getting wonderful tomatoes and peppers and all the herbs are coming in. Um, onions are pretty much finished. And it's funny, I'm, I'm, I'm a very anal person. So I didn't, it, Camille had to tell me, I, it's, it's so funny with onions. I really thought you had to do that whole process to eat, it, eat an onion. But I didn't, I didn't realize that Bill and everyone was telling me that's how you uh, store an onion, like about curing it. <laughs> so I really didn't realize that you could just literally eat the, you know, the onions are ready. So that, that was funny. I, I was telling everyone, you got to wait 50 days. And Kim was like, no, you could eat your, you could, you could eat the onion. I didn't realize that was just about to prepare an onion for storing. So that's pretty, so now I could, Enjoy my onions. I thought I had to eat them like two months from now for some reason. <laughs> I wanted to ask a quick question about your compost bins, Chad. Yes. Do you, it looked like you had the three bin system set up. I'm just going to go back to uh, yeah. that again so you can all see. The, so the plan is to do what in those three bins? Just talk us through it. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I, you know, we've, we actually put up a little bit on the bottom of all three, which is not typical, but we had a lot of, uh, we, like, a lot of sticks we were breaking up. Yeah. So we're trying to clean up the back area. So we feel it's good to have like these sticks in the bottom kind of drain things out of it. Mm -hmm. But the idea is, you know, the first bin that Jim is leaning on is you start putting, your, you know, your, your uh, leaves, your food scraps, you know, you build that pile up to it gets, you know, fairly high, you know, and it, and it heats up. And after a while, when that's cooking, you then, which is the very labor intensive part, you take the pitchfork and then, then you know, when that's done, you dump it over into the other, the middle one, mm -hmm. you know, it's the kind of thing where you let everything sit for a few weeks or months, you know, depending on the weather and how big the pile gets. And then, you know, so that, that you know, one, and then once that's done, then, then the first one will be free again. And then the second one's cooking. And then even then, then you're going to turn it over to the third pile. So, the, you know, the third pile should really be the finished pile. So, you know, by the time it's in there, it's already, you know, you've turned it a few times just by moving it. You know, so ideally when, you know, everything's going great and we're getting a ton of food scraps, the, the farthest pile from him will be a finished compost. You know, the middle one is still kind of cooking and the first one is what people are, are putting in there. Gotcha. Thank so, you. You know, and, and depending on how much you get, that's how fast it goes. You know, the bigger the pile and the more, you know, nice, good mix of greens and grounds, greens and browns, I don't know why I say ground, browns, you, you know, you then get it, it heats up more, the larger the pile. Gotcha. You know, if you leave a small pile, like if it just stayed like that, that wouldn't really, you know, that you would have to leave that for a very long time to be, to become anything. I'm, I'm putting yeah. in the, I'm putting in the chat. Last November, Jim Hall yeah. did a presentation for us on composting. There's a link to the video. He talked a lot about the three bin system and all that. Oh, right. And yeah, there's all different. People have all different philosophies, and 
actually Gus was there. He was like, he doesn't put any fruit scraps. He just uses coffee grounds and, you know, like nature will, de- everything will eventually turn to soil, but just depends how much you help it out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. by turning it, you, you aerate it, you know, you want to, you want to add some water, which I don't have to add, worry about adding water to it I'm sure for a while after yesterday. Um, and, you know, when the winter comes, everything slows down a bit. So, you know, that's the, that's the philosophy. Gotcha. Chad. Yes. Um, you're actually adding food stra- scraps and where are you getting the food scraps from? I'm curious. Well, I mean, as we, did, we didn't, again, we just built this on Saturday. Oh, no, I understand but, that. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm going to probably ask the members if they want to bring you know, that's, you know, I'll, I'll make a list of what, you know, what's right. acceptable and what's acceptable. Right. Um, but otherwise just, you know, me and the members, and again, I'm taking it very slow. And thanks to uh, Shannon's great suggestion on any email I'm sending out to everyone, I'm calling it a uh, leaf pile. I'm not saying compost pile. Very good. And, then, and, yeah, and you know, make always, I'm going to make sure the food scraps are, you know, always very well covered. Right. But um, I'll see, you know, if it's just me dropping off food scraps and, you know, and we do our food swaps, maybe I'll tell people to bring, you know, their, their uh, vegetable scraps as well. And, you know, I'm hoping this builds a little bit, but I'm taking it really slow. So as of now, I'll, I'll bring some stuff and, you know, maybe Sylvia, if she wants to bring or, you know, Camille could bring their food scraps and we'll, we'll, we'll put them into the, the bin. And then next season, maybe I'll try to, you know, get more and more food scraps. I'm just curious, we'll be curious to hear how you do with uh, critters. Yes. And and that's that's always been my concern. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find out quickly. <laughs> and my experience in the garden is that the, the garden produces a lot more compostables than our kitchen counter. Um, yes. So, oh, yeah. so you have plenty just from what you've got in your Right. Even if I take the, you know, peppers and tomatoes that fall off or get, you know, chewed up and drop them in there, that, 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 that'll be a lot as well. So, uh, right. You know, garden scraps for probably for this year, but it will, will uh, but I'm right. I'll be very aware of that. If I do see some issues, then I will have to rethink everything. All right, Chad, you had a few more, right? I'm going to share. My yeah, I think just so we can go back to the more. Yep. Thank you. Um, then I beans. Uh, beans are coming in. Looking good. A lot of beans yeah. are growing very strong. That's you know it's along the whole fence. I just took a little picture, and um, so right. You know again, I'm sure as Sarah knows and everyone you know, now everything everything is growing very well. We have some really interesting peppers, except for zucchini and cucumber. I do not know why, but I've had no. The zucchini is just not growing. Like mm-hmm. it, they'll start growing and fanning out, and then. Hmm. Get white and so far we got three zucchini. Wow. Is, yeah, is anybody very... is anyone anybody browsing your beans from the other side of the fence? No. Well, we're, we're kind of lucky because right behind that is uh, right next to the garden is like a little bit of a creek bed, like a little runoff water. So there's literally like three feet in between, and there's a fence. So there's like a little runoff creek. A bunch of uh, nat- nat- natural growing weeds, a little pathway, and then our six foot fence. So, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure maybe some critters are getting from the other side, but they, they you know, they, they really have to squeeze in. And then, you know, we put the fence down low. I'm even covering it with a carpet, but they might be getting it from the other side, but so far it doesn't look like they are. And then no, I, the, think, uh, uh, I don't know about Michael, but we put some pole beans against the exterior fence. And the, the deer are, are having a nice little snack on the outside. <laughs> right. Like a deer couldn't even fit in that, you know, in that little area. Like, you know, I, definitely squirrels and chipmunks and small stuff, but our, 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 our little closed off thing is, right. you know, it's, a deer would have to really squeeze in. And, you know, I don't think they like being. The deer that really that like that type of thing. Yeah, exactly. So they wouldn't like that. You're, you're safe. <laughs> yeah. But again, you know, other critters could uh, come along. But we have, you know, everything's going very nicely. And that the other picture is uh, we had a really nice food swap. And thanks to Jim as well, who uh, gave our free seeds because um, he, he has a, a Home Depot, gave him hundreds of seeds. Hmm. Like, incredible. So uh, I guess, you know, I posted that. So we, we had two or three people show up to the food swap, which was nice. And this uh, Deborah 
brought, you know, all these tomatoes, giant zucchini, and, you know, a lot of stuff. So that that's her harvest. And, you know, I brought a lot of that to the senior center on um, Thursday morning. So Wednesday nights are food, the food swaps, where I'm hoping people will bring extra stuff. And these are uh, ground cherries, which are growing very nicely. And I really enjoy the taste of those. And I think they're kind of great looking. And I guess they look very similar to, or, or the same as gooseberries, right? I, mean, I don't know. I heard they're not the same, but I think they look similar. They look a lot like tomatillos. That's what and, I'm thinking. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not tomatillos. Oh, we have tomatillos we have growing very nicely. Those are really nice. And I have a lot of those. I'm planning on doing something with the tomatillos because no one wants them, but I'll, I'm not much of a cook, but I'll try to make some type of uh, salsa verde or something. Yeah. Um, how many of those plants did you plant, Chad? Your cake, your gooseberries or your... Um... No, that's all just one little, that, that's about it, that little ground cherry. I, I didn't have a lot of luck starting from, again, I started a lot of seeds in the uh, peat pots, which I, again, yeah. wasn't the greatest idea. You know, some of them did grow, but then a lot of them, I realized just stay stuck in that same size. Yeah. But that, yeah, we, we did have one, uh, Camille donated that one and that's growing. But uh, otherwise, five. tomatillos are nice. Oh, yeah, five of those. Those are nice. I have five, so we're getting armloads of those uh, wonderful orange berries. They're just so delightful. And everyone's always like, what's that? You know, it's such a, it's a nice, uh, it's a good thing to show. You know, it's very interesting, and they taste it, and everyone's like, ooh, it's yeah. an interesting taste. Yeah, it's a big crowd pleaser. That's they're, true. An, they're an annual, right? You have to plant them every year? They are. They're not yes. hardy. Mm -hmm. No, I mean the yeah. ground cherries. Yes, the, yep. uh, yes, ground cherries. Yep, they're not hardy. I have to plant them every year. Uh, and they're also not perennial. Yes, thank you, <laughs> Chad. All right, I'm going to go back to my presentation. And Jim is not here. So shall we, um, Chad, mean, do you want to talk through his pictures? Do you know what goes on in there? I just said one question for Chad. Yes. Chad, are your tomatillos ready? Yes. Are they ready? Really? So are mine. Mine are not filling out. They're still puff balls. Wow. I yeah. know. I know. I mean, it should happen very soon. Like, mom was like that. And then, uh, yeah, I look, and then yeah, it, it happens quickly when you just take a little squeeze and then they're all of a sudden it fills out. Yeah, that is like yeah. a magical thing. It's like, wait, you don't know. And then you squeeze it and there's nothing. And then you squeeze it. So. I yeah. know. I keep like, well, I'm eagerly waiting. We've got the tomatoes, we've got the uh, cilantro, and we've got the. Uh, Tomatillo is growing. We want a salsa party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll try one last, but I, you know, you can show Jim's picture. I mean, he has, those are nice pictures anyway. I mean, they're kind of. Uh... Yeah. Do you know what goes on in them, Chad? Shall I just uh, go go to them and maybe you can try to talk us through them? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I mean, I know. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Start. Okay. Let me just uh, back up a little to Jim's. And he had so many. He had 10 pictures. Yeah, I know. That's why I warned him. I said, you better be there. <laughs> <laughs> but again, okay. yeah, so I mean, show, you know, they're, they're nice pictures to look at anyway. All right. So let's look at Jim's pictures. So obviously, uh, now I think Jim has two community, Jim, Jim runs two community school gardens in Monroe. Mm -hmm. And he's a master gardener. So uh, I guess he's show. I, I don't know. I'm assuming these are the let me see. Uh, sorry, guys. Let me check the email he sent me if he gave any. I went through it. He didn't really give too much. He did say one of them is like, this is my house as well, right? Yeah. So we'll, we'll get there. But I'm guessing these are, you know. Right. Yeah, here. I guess this is obviously. And then he's been posting that he's getting, you know, giant tomatoes. So. Okay. These are the tomatoes on the right. This is his school garden, which, again, I seem, I guess it seems like he's running himself now because school is not, not on. Right. It's funny. A lot of a lot of the old, a lot of the Sarah and all you guys are really helping me out. Like Jim's been showing up, and uh, Carolyn Adams, the woman who runs the other Greenwood Lake Garden, is showing up. So I guess they know this. This is a tough time of year, and they're like helping each other out. She's planted a lot of lettuce, so I have like she planted like forty uh, things of lettuce for me. So I have lettuce coming out. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, she's she's like insanely talented with lettuce. Like she's like lettuce lady. She's constantly growing greens all year. Oh, I'm. Give up in the summer. Yeah, that's she. Yeah, no, she keeps going. Um, so yeah, I'm assuming this is school gardens, and looks. I guess he has this funny little scarecrow over there with the uh, the big eyes, but mm -hmm. looks like a lot of. Uh, I can't quite see. I'm old. 
Yeah, some kind of green, right? Especially the picture on the right could be like mm -hmm. some kind of brassica. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, he has nice. Uh... This looks like it could be a school garden. Where's the? Yeah. This? yeah, this is. is like they're this. both. They're both in Monroe. Okay, this is beautiful. Lovely. Yeah, no, he's doing a great job there. Wow. Okay, so Horn. is this his house? The yeah, house? no, 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 I guess not. Well, Still not. Yeah, it looks like it's the school garden, okay. but I guess he has corn, corn, zucchini. Yeah. Everything's growing very nicely. Yeah. I think he has that yeah. funny picture of Papa. And then, uh, oh, no, maybe those are his house, the one with the more of the backyard look. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I'm guessing probably. That's, that, that's probably his house as well. Mm hmm. Alrighty. And, and I like you made this little plank. This is the last one. That looks yeah. like a squash growing in a compost pile to me. Exactly. I was say exactly. that. It must be so happy. <laughs> plenty, plenty of nutrients. Yeah. Okay. So now we've seen the Greenwood Lake Community Garden. We're skipping through this. And then we're going to get to our um, very popular QA section or um you know the community picture section we're gonna hear from christy who's dealing with tomato hornworms patricia whose cucumbers are doing swimmingly the runner beans reaching new heights and the peach tree doesn't look so peachy michael's gonna show us some sun choke action and uh, i have some surprises of my own oh nice so christy Ooh. you there no, well, no, she, she always just sends them. She doesn't. Uh, she, I, yeah, she, I, she's I don't the, have access to the participants, so I can't see. Yeah, no, sorry. She, she, po she, always, she's the one who posts our videos. So I guess she watches the videos. Oh, she, she does watch the videos. She says how great uh, she goes. Hope to be. Uh, oh, she hopes to be with us. I guess not. She goes. I've had tons of cherry tomatoes trimming the plants. A great advice, thanks, Nicole. But I missed two hornworms that I just found yesterday, big and full of wasp larvae. Oh. That's wonderful, though. Don't, nice. She should leave them there. She should leave them there and let them just die and let the wasps complete the life cycle and have them in her garden. These yeah. are organic gardeners' best friends. Yes. But said, aren't these pictures it. incredible? The two on the left are so clear. I mean, they could be, you know, sort of in structural pictures for yeah, it know, is the hornworm cycle. Is that is really wild. Her she said she uh, she plucked them off and put them in a jar. It's a great science lesson for the grandkids. <laughs> oh darn! That might be kind of intense, right? Well, I guess we're gonna, are we gonna watch the eggs like devour Ooh. them? Does does she know about what what Shannon just said? Should have left them. Well, hold on, she might because now she just she's gonna watch this video and she's gonna hear what you have to say, and I'll I'll yeah. email her. Good. All right. Well, next time, leave them there because you want those in your garden. You know, one year I had them and what I did was after I found out what they were, I put them off because it was earlier in the season, but I put them on the ground and just fed them tomato leaves until they did their thing. That's so good of you, Sarah. Oh, yeah. Very humane. Look at that. I, named, I named them, you know. <laughs> well, her question is, any, is there anything she could do to resurrect the two plants? Not many leaves left that aren't yellow and withering. Oh. She trimmed off some of the dead branches while on the worm search, so it looks a lot worse before. I've got suckers that I could try cutting and planting, but is, is it too late for that? So her question is, can she resurrect? Can you go back to the picture? All? I think we were focused on the the, the hornworms, and right. if we could look at the plant again. Okay. Right, so can she resurrect this plant, and is it too late for her to plant? any of the suckers separately. I don't think it looks that bad at all. I think the that. plant looks like yeah. it's fine. And it's, uh, and she can find that. more hornworms if she goes out there with a black light. Black lights at night will help her find the hornworms. Wow. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. That's like a weird hornworm glow. search. They, they glow bright green under a black really? light. Wow. It's a hornworm night safari. That's exciting. I am asking since we got this, you know, rain, I don't know if she's on town or village water, but I find when we have actual rain from the skies, that does wonders for the garden. So I would just trim them up and they'll keep growing. Now, and separately, if she planted the suckers, is it probably too late in the game to uh, too late? Start? Yeah, I think so. 
Mm-hmm. I do have some volunteers growing just now, little cherry tomatoes in my own backyard, but we'll see what happens with those. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to worry about watering for a few days. I think <laughs> we're right. good. That's right. Okay. The things are so funny. We, you know, we might have two 90 degree intense days. Next thing you know, you know, by Thursday, everything could be uh, dry again. Especially in raised beds, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Patricia, tell us what we're looking at. I think those are cucumbers in the left hand side there. Yes. In a, in a paddling pool. I didn't have any space. And so I just threw seeds in, you know, I put soil in and threw seeds in there. And they seem to be growing. There are a lot of yellow leaves at the bottom, but still seems to be starting to grow up the sides of the wire that I put there. And this huge tree came down right next to them. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Boy. Did mm-hmm. not, uh, it, it didn't touch this. It didn't touch the bench that we sit on. And there's a bluebird house back there. And it just came right down in the middle and didn't hurt anything, really. Wow. So lucky. So, what, yeah. what, it just came down on its own or was there yeah. a storm? Oh, wow. Yeah. We were away for a couple of weeks and... Uh, I don't know whether there was a particularly bad storm, but obviously the tree just cracked and came down. It was on an angle, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, this one, um, these are runner beans <laughs> and they're totally <clears throat> like bowed over because uh, I did what um, <clears throat> Bill McCoskey suggested I like made a frame Mm -hmm. and put netting over, but the beans are so heavy, they're dragging the netting down. Mm. But I don't know if you can see that. Those are the two poles, which were really long poles that I put at the end. And um, they've gone way high. I mean, that must be like eight feet. So (laughs) I realize (laughs) now I, I should have made the trellis taller. And uh, this is my peach tree. The, the peaches have got um, like black spots all over them. And they're not ripe yet, but um, I don't know. You know, they're very blemished, but there are lots of them, as you can see. And I have got so many tomatoes. I'm like turning red eating tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm looking at some of those peaches look pretty good. They look good. I think they're going to still ripen. I mean, the, the black spots, I have some of those as well in mine. I don't know. I'm assuming those aren't going to be good. But I, but from that picture, I see the, I see a lot of smooth looking peaches that probably just need to ripen still. Yeah. My peach tree is like really bending very severely. I don't know. It's not strong enough. It's, it's scary looking. But I, I think a lot of those, you, I think you still get a lot of peaches out of that that bunch and i'm not i don't i'm not a fruit tree expert but i I might just pick off some of the ones that look really you know intensely you know a lot of black spots and maybe stuff oozing out Uh, according to according to google it's something called peach scab and it's a fungus that occurs uh with warm humid climate oh we've had that yeah patricia as far as your issue with turning red from eating so many tomatoes, maybe next year you could pick a sort of a golden variety and then <laughs> you could over tomato but not turn red. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> also, you know, I learned from Mary Makovsky, you can um, like rinse a tomato and like put them in the freezer if you have and, and, and then just, yeah, and then just get them out yeah. and, they're, and they're really nice for soup in the middle of the winter. Oh, yeah. Oh, so if you want some extra for that. And then, of course, you can always make good friends with the neighbors uh, yeah. if you really have too many yeah yeah give them away <laughs> but, but my strongest suggestion is definitely get some golden tomatoes and and then and the color won't you know, you won't have that problem going red from eating too many. <laughs> good idea do you make do you like make sauces and, and things like that with the tomatoes or uh... i just eat them raw because i do really love tomatoes all right so i can see it's affected, it's affected your hair and everything yes <laughs> Well, you know, okay. Patricia, they really are, if you have large ones, I blanch them, but I mean, they freeze. It's really easy to freeze them. It's great to have them in the middle of winter. And on your cucumbers, 
that are kind of yellow leaves. Have you put any type of fertilizer on them? No, I, I planted them really late. And so I just used like uh, compost and, uh, you know, those bags of like bone meal that you can get, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. That was what I, what I actually grew them in. So I figured that the soil must be really pretty rich. But do you well, you know, it's a, it's a small container, so the soil could get depleted, you know, fairly easily. But it's there's also the hot weather, which is, you know, a problem. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't hurt to get, usually one of the things with the other leaves is, they, is plants need a little fertilizer. I mean, I wouldn't put a whole lot, but it wouldn't hurt to put a little bit on there and see between that and the rain if they don't perk up a little more. Okay, good Not idea. Much. Yeah, okay. Is, is, it I, is it nitrogen that they need? Nitrogen is what you put on for yellow leaves, but you don't want to use too much nitrogen because you don't want a lot of foliage, you want fruit. And nitrogen, a lot of nitrogen promotes foliage. But like I said, it's, it's hard to tell, but you haven't, your your uh, cucumbers haven't produced yet. Is that right, Patricia? You're on mute. Then, You're on mute, Patricia. Yeah. No, I haven't got any fruit yet. No. But they're blooming. Yes, they are blooming. Yeah. So they'll have fruit soon. Mine got some sort of, of uh, fungus and they're about shot. But I would definitely, you know, give them a little TLC and see, you know, if they don't perk up now because you, you should be able to get a good harvest. Okay. And once they, once they um, bloom and you have pollinators around, they grow pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. I, I put some remedies for peach scab in the chat section. And from what I understand, unless you have a massively bad case, if you peel the fruit, the fruit underneath will be edible or able to be canned or processed. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, folks, it's just gone past the halfway point. So we're going to take a minute to shimmy in place and we'll be back here at 8.35. And during the shimmy in place break, we leave the video running, hoping that the people watching at home will also do their shimmy in place. Okay, we're gonna resume. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. Michael, this is yours. Go ahead and tell us what we're looking at here. So, okay, I, I think it's better to look at the picture on the right. And I wanna explain that we have this big um, dirt pile from when they built uh, the pavilion in our backyard. And my wife and I sometimes refer to the dirt pile as Shea Stadium because you know the Mets are famous because there's always next year, right? <laughs> and so, the goal of the of the um, of this is to uh, the dirt pile is to sort of develop the soil and leave it, um, you know, covered and 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 maybe a little bit wet and 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 to, to to help the soil get a little bit nicer and richer before I start using it for other projects. So looking in that picture on the right, I found those old rotting logs out in the forest and I thought, oh, I can 
I can sort of make a little bit of a border here and I can pile some dirt in there. And I actually was growing potatoes in there. And then when I was growing potatoes, you can see in the right, there's that sunchoke that started growing in the middle of my potatoes. And I just thought it was fascinating to see the runners coming off those sunchokes and the, the little teeny tiny immature sunchoke uh, that would be presumably would ripen by, um, by the end of the year. I just, when I saw that, I thought, oh, that's just a fascinating picture and I just wanted to share it. It is fascinating. I had no idea that they looked like that under the ground. Yeah, it is good when you see the, what Oops. happens. Sorry. And what the stuff we can't see. Yeah, and they are really, they really produce runners. And, and, and while I've got the floor, I just wanna share a small story about my negotiations with a groundhog. So, <laughs> So negotiations. <laughs> yeah. So um, many of you have visited our house. Inside our deer fence, we've got a woodshed. And now outside the deer fence, we've got a tool shed. And for years, ever since before we moved in, the woodchucks, the groundhogs have had burrows underneath the tool shed outside uh, the deer fence. I had never seen a groundhog come inside until a couple weeks ago, or since we've had the last Zoom garden plot. And then I noticed this guy sitting out and then when we did anything to disturb him, he would run back under one of the wood one of the pallets in the woodshed. Okay, well, I got it. I got a trap, which the, the those, I observed this guy, he's really smart. He just ignored the, the have a heart mm -hmm. trap that we got. <laughs> and, and so then, uh, well, next step, take all the wood off the pallet, move the pallet, and look at his burrow, which is a lot different because, you know, if he, he builds his burrow in a really protected place. So we got it off, and, and, um, and then I would do things like I would leave a couple sticks on top of the burrow. So if he was coming and going, it was easy for him to move the sticks, but he was basically letting me know he was coming and going. And when he saw his th one thing was exposed, he basically started digging under a different pallet. Well, one day I saw him out in the yard and um, I went outside and he ran under the pallet where he was digging a new hole and I was all set. I went over to the burrow that was exposed. And the first thing I did was I ran a garden hose down it to see how far it went. And also to see if there was maybe another groundhog down there. Uh, the hose went down about five and a half feet. I'm not sure if it got to the end of the burrow or if there was a curve in the burrow that the hose didn't make, but it was a well dug burrow. Uh, and then, because I believe there was no groundhogs down there, I started filling it in and I put some stones in. And of course, there was plenty of extra dirt around that the groundhog had thrown up under the, under the pallets. And so I filled it in and I covered it with chicken wire. Yeah, chicken wire. Well, later that afternoon, I saw him studying how I redesigned his old burrow. <laughs> He's a smart feller. He really is. And, and the, I did one other thing, and this was based on what Leslie had said in an earlier Zoom garden plot. And that was, um, I also got a, some mothballs and I stacked out on top of the wood pile where he, under which he was starting to dig a new Thing. It's not exactly like putting it down in his burrow, but it's close enough to irritate a person. I'm pretty sure he figured out that I would move that other wood pallet and, and put chicken wire over his other one. And it was just going to be too much trouble. Uh, so he has left the deer fence area. I have not seen him back inside or signs of him. I did the first day um, I put that in and I'd see him. I saw one wood check. I'm not sure if it's the same one. I'd always seen them sometimes, like from my bedroom window, I could see them out by the tool shed. Um, and, but this particular time, it's like he'd gone straight from that toward my bedroom window and he looked at me and then he made a beeline for his burrow and I haven't seen him since. So that's how my negotiations are going. The case isn't closed. There may be future developments, and if there are, we'll let you know. But this is the state of our negotiations at the moment. I am happy to report. Sounds more like a television series or an adventure more than a negotiation. 
it's it's a subplot in the next <laughs> exciting episode of the Zoom exactly, Garden Plot. Yeah. <laughs> We're definitely going to need an update on that one. He's a smart guy. They they so all Mike, are. They all are. And and Michael, you know, do you have access to a dog? <laughs> Gosh, um, my neighbor has a dog. Well, in my, uh, the groundhogs we had in the community garden were much more uh, aggressive than yours. We won't even get to how many things we did to try to make him move until we, you know, finally did the ultimate move. But I have them under my sheds and I save up uh, dog poop in plastic bags. And then I shove dog poop in plastic bags down the holes. And, that's, oh. and that, that seems to um, encourage them to move on. It's not 100%, but it, it, it does. And I have dogs, so of course I have, you know, a supply of material. That's a, that's a very strong <laughs> negotiation. Yeah, that's dedication. <laughs> well, you in know, the winter, you, you save up a lot of it. Because, you know, it keeps nicely outside frozen. And in the spring, he's not around. And I go to the spots and I just mm, cram it in there. <laughs> and then put a rock over it. The thing is, living under the tool shed, they have never particularly bothered me. That's interesting. Uh, um, um, and if I, I would, want, would not want to drive them out of the tool shed and get them start to, to looking for new places, like maybe inside the deer fence. So... I don't know if he stays there. That's yeah. that's yeah. fine, but interesting. Does he have offspring, Michael? Do you know? You know, yeah. I um, I've always just sort of seen one groundhog at a time. I haven't seen a whole family, um, but there and. When Shannon visited me, we found something that was like way down at the other end of the yard. There was another one. So I, I don't know how many groundhogs are in the neighborhood. Hmm, interesting. I always found with groundhogs that once they start developing families, mm -hmm. brood one, brood two, mm -hmm. that you know, the yeah. offspring need their own homes, but they want to stay fairly close to mom and dad. So before you know it, you have quite a few burrows. And yeah, I don't know, Sarah, your idea does sound, I mean, it sounds doable and not as bad as some of the Solution I that. wasn't. I wasn't sure how this groundhog got in my in my deer fence, um, and apparently he can go in and out of the deer fence at will. And I'm not sure how that. You know, I don't think he has a go something that goes underneath. Um, but I once heard Bill talking about a a, a a juvenile groundhog they that climbed. They climbed. And I guess he thought that uh, the adult groundhogs or maybe were, were a little bit too chubby or something to do the climbing, but the juvenile ones can. Mm -hmm. So maybe this was one who was trying to move out of the nest mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, maybe. Right. And I convinced him. And I, I think the other thing was, you know, I saw him right away. The first day he was there, I knew he was there and started messing with him. So he hadn't been well established. If he'd been there for weeks and weeks and I tried to move him out, I think it would have been a lot more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I found the older ones to be quite nasty. I had one in my yard when I had a dog that, that didn't have any prey drive. And I would go, you know, tell it to leave. And it would like, like come at me hissing. <laughs> yes. Now I have a dog with prey drive and she keeps them wherever they are. She's not big enough to kill them, but she keeps the critters back where they belong on the other side of the deer fence. They have little exits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do recommend chicken wire for a good you, idea. If you need to close up a yeah. Okay. Um, all right, everyone. I'm gonna um that was interesting, Michael. So yes, we will definitely want to hear more next time. Yes. The groundhogs are always interesting. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to share my screen again. We're going to go into the last leg of the presentation. Oh, this is mine. <laughs> what you see on the left there are also very handsome Cooper, um, but yes. a handful of shade grown tomatoes. Mm. This is my surprise. Um, I did not know that tomatoes grow in relative shade. We're talking max two, two and a half hours of sun, literally a small spot of morning sun. 
And this is the beginnings of the tomatoes. There are a lot more that are beginning to ripen. I was completely flabbergasted. I did Google it. Apparently it's, it's a thing, it can be done. And you're talking mainly about the cherry varieties and the, and the, I think the vining types. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to share, so it took me a while to get over that because I always associate tomato sun, tomato sun, you can't ever do it in shade. I was lamenting for years that I would never have tomatoes, but as you may or may not know here on my property, I have a lot of shade, hardly any sun, but this was a happy accident. On the right are some mini cucumbers. They are literally the size of, gosh, maybe my thumbnail. They look wow. like cucumelons. Are they cucumelons? I, I can't remember exactly what they're called, but yeah, they, are, yes. they are tiny, tiny, tiny. And I plan to pickle them and they're gonna make nice garnishes for cocktails. They're mm -hmm. cucumelons and they're adorable. Yes. They are, right? Yeah. Those are like almost like ground cherries, the same type of That's thing. Right. Like, in, yeah. Interesting, like combination and and very uh, interesting. Are those yeah. gherkin? Is that the same thing as a gherkin or ger gherkins are different, right? So they're gherkins different. are different, I think. They're different. Yeah, they're different. These look like when you look at them up close, they look like little baby watermelons. Yeah. Just, Chevy. Just but they, they taste like a little cucumber, right? Almost like a little. They do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And again, pro prolific, prolific. This is the first handful and we go in the garden and we're just getting buckets full of this stuff. Okay. So when I visited Nicole's garden last year, uh, she's not on the call tonight. Usually she's here, but I visited Nicole's garden. She was growing cucumelons. They were everywhere. And she gave me some and um, I took them home and I saved the seeds. Yeah, me too. I haven't grown them yet. <laughs> yeah, I've tried. I haven't had luck, but I, I found them very durable. And I saw I... them. Uh, Go ahead. Jeff. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say, I forgot that I'd started a bunch from seed. I didn't label them. Reminder to self, always label your seed trays. And so I just threw them in a bed. And before I knew it, they had overrun the bed, overrun every vertical surface, any plant near it. But um, they have made up for that annoying quality by rewarding me with these really delightful little cucumelons. So they're forgiven. Go ahead, Ted, did you want to say something else about that? No, no, no. And, uh, and the, sh the shade tomatoes look wonderful. And you know, it shows you whenever you think there's a rule, then it doesn't mean that there's a rule. <laughs> that you know, things sometimes grow when they're not supposed to and they don't grow, you know, just, just things happen. But they look really nice, those tomatoes. Yeah, and they taste pretty good. They taste pretty good. And apparently, um, you know, they need heat and um they need the nutrients but they don't apparently need as much light as i as i thought for them to set and then ripen the fruit right L last right. year last year i showed a picture a friend of mine and sarah doesn't like this method but still <laughs> a, a friend of mine and he sent me a text picture pic a text message maybe a week or two ago he harvested a whole table full of green tomatoes and he says that um, if he left them on the vine, he'd lose a percentage of them to critters and other issues. So, so that basically by doing this, you know, I probably he'll use them for canning. I believe he leaves a few on the vine so that he can eat some that are, you know, just really fresh. But he, he basically pre-harvests a lot of green tomatoes just so, so he has all that volume of food that he can can and stuff. And maybe that would be a way that you could, you do tomatoes, you know, just get them big and green and mm -hmm. then bring them inside and let them you know, color up that, that way. Yeah, yeah. And I, I heard from a farmer at a farmer's market, I think I may have mentioned it in a previous um, Zoom garden plot, that if you leave a little stem on the tomato, it's more likely to, to ripen on the countertop. This is something I did not know. That's interesting. I'd actually like to test that theory. Yeah, yeah. I have a bunch of them on chunks of vine sitting on my countertop right now, so I can test that. Okay, so we're moving ahead. Any other questions, comments? Anybody else want to tell us about what's going on in your garden? I've got a, I've got a question, and especially my wife wanted me to ask this question, so I get bonus points for, for coming up with an answer to this. Does anyone here have a fig tree or experience growing figs in this area? I have a fig tree and terrible experience because it's not producing any fruit. How long have you had it? This is our second year. 
it had tiny little figs on it the first year when we bought it. Um, we let it go through its natural process of losing the leaves, wrapped it in burlap, stored it after letting it sit outside and get really cold, stored it in the greenhouse, nicely covered, wheeled it out in the spring, put it in a sunny spot, kept it adequately watered and fed. Beautiful foliage, no figs to speak of. Very disappointing. Hmm. I think it might take a, well, I don't know. I think figs are pretty quick, but yeah, you know, two years is not that, not long. Yeah, but it had figs. That's a potted plant too, right? It is pretty big pot though. Yeah. Yeah. I know somebody who's, who, um, uh, I know somebody who does that she, very successfully and she has like a stem this big on her fig plant and it's it's in a big plant and they wheel it into the garage and they wheel it onto their deck which gets like full sun all day long uh, and so that may be the difference between her figs and yours we I think you all saw the the ones we had um that uh, we had this brilliant idea to store them in a straw how bale house over the winter. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, uh, the Voles thought that was a brilliant idea also. <laughs> uh, and you so- to, You didn't have to negotiate with those too, right? Um, right, we, we, we um, there's, I've noticed a cat, a neighborhood cat has been spending time negotiating with the Voles. There you uh, go. And there's also a couple snakes back there, at least a couple. I've seen a lot of snakes in our backyard. And I think, uh, anyway. Uh, we wish everyone luck, right? Um, let's see. Um, snakes are going to be really good for a lot of the stuff you're going to have in your garden, not just the rodents and the chipmunks, but grasshoppers, which uh, my my stuff gets eaten to hell by grasshoppers, like those big guys. Um, they're basically like locusts that don't fly. Um, but the snakes will help with that for sure. We had a uh, hawk over at the community garden on Sunday. And it sat on the orchard post the entire time we were frantically harvesting, waiting for the hurricane. So I know there's one in the area and I think the hawk, I hope it's not eating the birds that feed there, but the hawk should take care of chipmunks and voles and mice if they might be wandering around our garden. <laughs> Okay. So, so um, anyway, we did a couple of things to help our figs. We're having fruit on our figs, but they've been in the ground for uh, you know three or four years. We had a small one that we'd sort of given up on, and suddenly it's got all this fruit on it. That that, that was last year. It suddenly had fruit, and they, it has fruit again this year. Maybe you should just give up. But like that's the thing. The less attention, like you gave up on that one, and now it's doing super good. <laughs> I will pass that along to Xiaotong. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> Give up. <laughs> Terrible. But uh, Michael, will you do the same thing with the with the straw bale? I mean, how are you going to approach it? Uh, let's see. In previous year, we did it. We did the thing with the, one of the things they say is just the wind. You know, the cold is going to get cold. Mm. You just want to keep the wind, the desiccating wind, off it. That that's mm. that's what I've heard. So probably I'll do something like I've got that four foot fencing. And we'll do that and wrap in burlap and just something to keep the wind off, but not make it so nice for the for the voles. Okay. That's that would be my volt anyway. We'll need an update on that for sure too. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I wanted to tell Patricia. I went out to the mud room. This is I don't know if you can see this. This is an organic fertilizer. Okay. It's called a spona plant town and I use this this is an all-purpose one and this is a 533 so the three is nitrogen and they also make one for vegetables so something like this and you don't need a lot of it sprinkled around um, the granular could probably give her her plant a little boost you can buy them at uh, I get it at Waitson's or I'm not sure where you live Patricia but most of the good garden centers carry it. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. We're gonna move on to announcements. Um, the next Zoom garden plot 
Guys, are we having it at 8 p.m. still? It's Monday, isn't that? Um, oops, and I have a typo right there. Isn't that Labor Day? Yes, it is. It is. What do we do about that? Do we have? Oh, I'm out. I'll be at work. <laughs> no. Oh, wait a second. Hold it. No, Hold it's, the the it's the 13th. It's the second Monday of the month, right? Oh, hold on. Yes, yeah. it's supposed to be. It's, it's not second. every two weeks. It's the second Monday of the month. So it's it should second be the 13th. Monday. You're safe. Right. So it's the 13th. Yay. It's and I guess maybe do we want to do 8 o'clock or 7.30 or? Let's move it earlier. Yeah, let's go for 7.30. Starting in September is fine. So September 13th. Okay. For anybody watching this after the fact, please excuse the typo. And it is September 13th at 7.30. Um, Chad, do you want to tell us about, I am afraid I only sort of half took in the information about Jim's free seed. Uh, he is offering free seed, but, um, I only know of the one, um, place he's offering it at, and that's the Monroe farmer's market. Yeah. All right. He, he was by us twice. And let me see. The announcement. Do you um, have and he says, is going to be by the Master Gardeners within the Monroe Farmers Market, which I don't know the date. I don't know when he's there next, but I know that's. Uh, it's usually on, on Sunday. Sunday. Yep. That's on Sundays. I don't know. Mm -hmm. He'll be there, and the Greenwood Lake. Uh, we're starting off Farmers Market on September 11th. I don't. He says September 11th. I'm not sure that he's going to be there on September 11th. Sorry. So, but hopefully he'll. He has a lot more seats to give away. So, I'll. I'll I post stuff on Facebook. And to the email group, I, I'll try to let you know when they're posting again. But definitely, uh, maybe I'm maybe assuming this, this Sunday, I'll try to ask him. Okay. And he did also mention um, that the seeds, are they this year's seeds or last year's? I forget. No, I think that they, 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 were, they were very new seeds. I think that's 20, 2021 seeds. 2021 seeds. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I have, I have a question about the seeds. What... Does he have particular types of seeds, you know, like varieties? No, he had like hundreds. Like, oh. a lot. He had okay. lots. like literally like the display cases, like two full ones of display cases, all different, all different, huh. you know, plants. It was uh, nice and present, you know, all, most of them organic, you know, no GMOs and very good stuff. Oh, well, um, I'll get in touch with him because I couldn't come down there the weekend he was at your garden, but yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure he'd be happy to uh, share. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. And the last item on our announcement list is that we have our next meeting of the Sustainable Warwick Book Club happening on September 13th. Michael, would you like to tell us about the book? Okay. So um, if you can stop sharing the screen, yep. uh, I just put it, the book title in is actually the 14th. So Zoom Garden Plot is Monday and book clubs are Tuesday, the second Tuesday of the month. Got it. And I put the title and the author in Nature's Best Hope, A New Approach to Conservation That Starts in Your Yard. Here's a copy of what the book like, look, looks like. Apparently, Doug Palamy is, uh, is, uh, is well known in the field of trying to get people into doing gardening and doing things with their yards and so forth. So it just seemed like the members of the Zoom Garden Plot might be interested in, in joining uh, the book club to discuss this book. And, and beyond that, um, if enough of us like it, we might consider discussing the book like in November or December when there's nothing to do in our gardens, but we sort of look like look for a, a gardening topic to discuss. And one last thing I want to throw in, and we're right at nine o'clock, so we could almost finish on time this week. <laughs> The day after tomorrow is the Sustainable Warwick Annual Picnic. Everyone's invited. It's a zero waste potluck picnic, especially if you could cook something up from your garden and bring it and bring your own silverware and plates and stuff. Uh, we'd, it's, a, it's just a picnic. We don't have any agenda or meeting or anything going on. So nice chance to meet people. And it's outside at the Warwick Town Park. And that's on Wednesday? That's on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Warwick Town Park. Okay. This Wednesday. This Wednesday, day after tomorrow. Oh. And it's the it's the town park on um, Union Corners Road. That's the one across from the soccer fields. 
And what time does the book club meet, Michael? Remind us. It meets at 3 p.m. Yeah. And uh, email me if you're, um, if or, or email me if you're interested in getting a link. It's done by Zoom. We do we we do that by Zoom, and so uh, I'll send you the link. Okay. Plus the weekly food swaps we have at uh, 13 Poplar Street, I posted in the chat. If you have any extra cucamelons and you're in Greenwood Lake and you want to share them, uh, uh, Ch feel Chad, free to come by. Chad, yeah. I think you sent that to me. You didn't send that to everyone. Oh, sorry. All right. Well, <laughs> I sent that to Michael. All right. All right. Let me do that again. Here, let me do it. I can help you out. Oh, you're, you're probably fast. So we have 13 Poplar Street in Greenwood Lake, 6.30 to 7.30 every Wednesday. Sorry, I'll try to make the picnic if I could. And, um, you know, just bring extra food and then we'll share it with each other. Wonderful. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for your pictures. We so enjoy seeing them. Please keep them coming. This is your time to really shine and show off what you're doing in your gardens. Yes. Thank so, you for organizing all of this. It's wonderful. All right. We'll see you in September. The next exciting episode of Zoom Garden Plot. Good night, everybody.